is acknowledgement of the recording. We have a hard stop at 6 p.m. in order to allow time to prepare the room for the plan commission meeting at 630. We'll continue to have monthly meetings on the third Tuesday of every month at five o'clock. As a reminder, this is an advisory board with no authority to make policy. The end result for this committee is to draft and propose an ordinance for solar energy systems and battery storage systems. So what happens is even when we get done, if we come together and we propose a solar updated ordinance for the town of Culver, that has to go to the plan commission. The plan commission can then accept, reject, send it back, uh, do their own thing with it. And then after it gets through the plan commission, that has to go before the town council. So there's a lot of steps. So at this point, we're just going to be, in, we're just an advisory board working on this. And I don't have the previous minutes. We'll have to cover those, the previous minutes next month or this meeting in the last meeting. Other than that, we could take off where, uh, where we left off at when we had this list of different things everybody took home, some different ideas, concepts to, uh, to start throwing out opinions. I guess best to start in front. We got through maybe the first page or two last time. Mm -hmm. so, I'm all ears. And if you're online, would you please mute? I mean, the one thing that I, I liked last from last meeting, just to kind of bring us back up to speed, was Chester's way of differentiating, uh, especially when we're talking about in town, removing ground-based uh, mounting systems and allowing for only roof-based systems. I felt that was an excellent idea. It was accounting for the idea that somebody else's energy source is somebody else's blight uh, to look at. I thought that was being thoughtful from other different perspectives. So I appreciated that. Just kind of share with the audience a little bit where we were at. Um, and then the presentation, I mean, the really, I, I think for me, the lesser issue is is the micro systems. The, the real thing is, is the farm scale that we're really going to be discussing. And that, that's ahead of us right now, I'm sure, and where we're at. <clears throat> so I think focusing on that might be the real task in front of us. Okay, thanks for the update. Mm -hmm. And I will say for the audience, uh, our farm scale is defined as 10 acres or more of area designated for solar panels. So it's going to be rather large to begin with. And we do have from the micro scale, uh, small scale, medium scale, large scale, and farm scale. But since farm scale is going to be the one that's predominantly going to be an issue to neighbors and the general public a lot more than just a fan on a roof. Okay, so, so everybody reviewed it. I hope or had a chance to look at literally I'm I'm open for your for your comments now. The county has a 325 foot setback from residents, not from the property line, which is very unusual. All the other ordinances are based on property lines. So in this one, I don't know how far we jump ahead. But that's fine. Uh, in this one, it's there 500 feet from the property right. line is what's what's it on these notes. That only applies to farm scale, round mounted, right. round on the micro scale. Well, it applies to that, and I'm not. We'll have to look at large scale because large scale is one to ten acres. Mm I think it's a big difference if it's from your structure versus your property line. Yeah. If you have a large lot and your house is 200 feet from the property line, that means the whole solar field up 200 feet closer. Right. 
and the other thing should be a property line because then if it's from their structure, their neighbor's home, what if they decide if their house burns down and they decide to build it in a different spot, you know, which they have the right to do? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think you've got this point as well as far as one property that they want to put them on, you're talking extra 200 feet from yeah, that the next one may be only 50 feet from the property line itself. And then you're now you're talking uh, the owner property would have a different view of what they can do than what you know when you're doing some type of structure. I guess that's the other question I have is with 500 foot setback from center line adjacent right away, property line and interior project property lines, is there going to be anywhere inside? Of the town of Culver that can be built on. You don't have any not to be. Yeah. Even with 350, you don't have enough. So it's just out to town, though. It, it affects our whole zoning. Yeah. And that's, but we haven't, the Culver has, has does not have the full two miles of. <clears throat> those outside the city limits to the it would affect anything within Culver's zoning boundaries. As it exists, as a risk we have fall into the county. So and the primary, yes, if we're going to target it. We could speak more precisely. I think Steve would be more of our northern properties moving north from yeah. town, from the town corporation limits towards Burr Oak. That's where we're probably going to be confronted the most with farm scale solar, at least as it's being discussed right now. Mm -hmm. Talk about looking and extending our northern part. That that talk is but, over, Barry. Yeah, we we terminated that last yeah. week. Right now, as of okay. now, just so, as an update. All right. Are yeah. We, no, it's okay. We need to look at that. It was going to be done. No, we, that's not. Right. No. Nope. Yeah, really, that's ten. So yeah. that'd be a good answer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How about a simple no? <laughs> <laughs> They're just okay. going to have another strike. You know, I don't. I don't really want to have. No. Let's just look at the second page yeah. on the inside of the second page where it says permitting. Town of Culver zoning ordinance, Indiana zoning ordinances, commercial solar energy facilities are described in this ordinance. Remember, this is a draft, so it's not going to be the best language. It's, it's not even a draft, it's notes. Um, are permitted exclusively in industrial zoning districts. So why don't we just start? What districts would be appropriate to put this in? Industrial, agricultural, residential, commercial. We have all kinds of districts, right? Lake. Right. So what's the what kind of districts? We probably I, I'd go out and let them say we don't want it in anything that's residential. Well, you can eliminate that. Well, now it's, it's not going to fit in the residential. When you start with where you are talking about as far as 500 feet setback or even the 325, there's nothing in town and there's very little in any of the zonings other than agricultural. And you're going to be, as far as S1, if you got enough property that you're going to have to file for a uh, special permit anyway for agricultural use. So really those two zonings is like the only thing that would even be ethical. I'm going to say, didn't we just have a case of somebody being zoned S1 that wanted to go yes. to ag? So, yeah. no, I think so. What do we currently have in terms of industrial options in terms of the town zoning? The only without, without getting up and looking, there's it's really the limited. It, I could it is. That's what I mean. Zoned industrial was the stretch along State Road 17 behind the cabin factory. That's right. Or south of the cabin south factory. Of there's an eight punch there, but it could. I'm thinking maybe 40, 40 acres. There's some acreage to this to the south. That strip along, it's about 40. Yeah. This. These two are industrial. So north and south of. And this, this strip is industrial. 
basically just so uh, along 17. Yeah. Just now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless you're talking about north up by the 10 and 17. So. Uh, uh, north is where I, I think that property originally was zoned industrial. You used where, to uh, different. It's kind of small. There's another patch here off of Slate Street. This looks like it's also coded to be industrial yeah. one. Yep. It's a small. I guess the, the question motivated is okay, so anticipating the needs of governance of, of the solar, especially in terms of farm scale solar. If we're going to determine what to zone it, I guess we need to understand what we're going to need to govern, what we need to be able to regulate and monitor, and which one will give us the most ability to do so in terms of the language of the zoning. So which one affords us the best opportunity to govern what we need to govern when it comes to solar? Is it agricultural or is it industrial? So you're saying we need to come back to this question? Well, we go through looking more of this. I think what we would have to understand. Yes, maybe. I, I would. I'm suggesting it. I'm not dictating. No, I get. I get that. But okay. just to try I think make sure I understand. Yeah, I mean, right now. Part of those things. You need maybe the cart's ahead of the horse. Just get here on that one. Yeah. Fit the size that we're requiring. So it depends on if you're calling the whole thing industrial in that aspect. Because if you're, what's classifying it as industrial? Is it just the scale of the impermeous ground that is going to be taken up and what's going to be put in the ground? Or is the fact that what is going to be produced is predominantly going to be sold off, making it more commercial? A point well taken, right? So you're not producing widgets. No. So you're a whole different scale of what kind of pollution and things you're going to be. What I guess I'm saying is we could research. So what we're doing is we're dealing with a, 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 an energy producing industry. Mm -hmm. So what have what has been done previously for wind turbine for water dams? What are those classifications for those? Yeah. How are those governed in terms of energy producing industry? Right. And I would be hard pressed to say any of them would probably be traditionally labeled as agriculture. I would agree with that. Okay. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't necessarily go that because, like, when you make a park, it's not producing anything, but it's also not actively mm -hmm. doing something. Right. Like, I know you're collecting energy, but it's not emitting any. Okay. In a yeah. yeah. No, I agree. That is just considerations, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. It's getting into the weeds. Huh? Yeah, a little bit. But what is it that we have to? Be able to do when it comes to solar in terms of governance within the zoning ordinance mm -hmm. and right. that would help us maybe understand what it would be zoned okay Fair. so what i'll do is i'm, I'm making notes and, and i'll just think out loud to you but i was thinking about putting this actually into it what we have into an <coughs> ordinance format and then leaving blanks to fill in Man, for know. instance um they're permitted in x zoning and we can fill that in later. Yeah. Okay. And I would say, you know, just for information, I mean, if if you leased your land or want to lease your land, then you would also have to or sell your land for solar. If we choose to have it listed as industrial, then we would have to list an industrial environment permits for the solar. You would have to go through a rezoning process. Yeah. And the other issue there's down no, the line there's is no way you want to zone agricultural land as industrial until some of them you can turn it into industrial. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. Or be able to zone back to agriculture yeah. as well. Right. Well and that's 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 another part of the issue that we're gonna have to wait for the county to hear about the decommissioning. <laughs> actually actually we're yeah. Sorry, the, we're we're gonna we're gonna be waiting on the state, and, the it, state, it, yeah. and to the next level, right? Yeah, well, yeah. What the state's got a report due October first on covers a lot of things, including its Senate Enrolled Act thirty three. It's an environmental law, so the state has that due for Department of Natural Resources October first of this year, and that should, from the state's perspective, answer some questions. Should. How small does their scale go? You know, or like, like we're, we're looking at small to large. Are they just looking at large? I haven't seen the state scales. Okay. I've seen I guess multiple other ordinances from 
Indiana and other states. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a definition from the state of Indiana. Okay. It's typically, it seems to be left up to the local jurisdictions. Okay. Okay, so I'll make up, leave that, Blake. I'll move on to, so the applicant. So when they go to apply, just to start with, I'll back up so I don't get too far ahead. Um, the way some of this is written, most of this is written that if somebody wants to put this in, they, they need to go in front of the BZA and, and and get it as get it as a variance to do that, something allowable in those districts. So when they fill out, ultimately fill out, we'll call it an application right now. There's a host of information that's probably going to be wanted to make a decision. That information is listed here. Uh, submit the total value of the assets, income, and economic activity that can be taxed by a taxing authority. So, how much do we get? Submit an economic cost benefit analysis describing estimated increase in property tax revenues, sales tax, other taxes. Not the, the meaning those would increase, meaning how much more would we get because of this as a community? Do the increase. How would it help the economics out of Culver? Provide estimated temporary construction jobs created, estimated permanent jobs created, the cost of the project's impact on roads and infrastructure. I'm going to stop with that one because that's a big one. That's what's that's held up in, in Marshall County right now is when they put these in, our roads aren't designed for the type of equipment that's going to come down them, install these. So it has to be road agreements also put in place that'll say they're going to ideally rebuild the road when they're done. Our roads are, as we all know, aren't great. And our roads were never designed for heavy equipment, lots of semis. The weight of a garbage truck full is incredible or a school bus. And then the ratio of private versus public funding for the, pro for the project. In other words, they need to disclose how much of that has been subsidized from the government to them versus how much they're spending out of their own pocket. I think the public gets to know that. Maybe based on actual cost, regardless where the money comes from. What's that? As far as like your ta taxes, whatever, as far as actual value. Am I right or wrong on that? Yeah, I think for me, when I hear that, <clears throat> and I brought it up during the last meeting, I want, I think the ratio of private versus public funding is also very telling about the nature of the project and the longevity of a project. What is sustaining the project and what is being able to bring it to bear? So understanding that information when they're making application or permitting is essential. Because are we looking at something that's being propped up by federal subsidies? And if that's the case, then we probably need to be a little bit more concerned in terms of the longevity of the project and what we're actually investing in cost benefit wise. Because if this is if this is being driven and, and this is the elephant in the room, we've all talked about it. If some of this solar is being driven by federal dollars and subsidies and that we see a regime change over the next year or four years or whatever, if this is going to be if solar in the county of Marshall County in the area of Marshall County is going to be propped up by subsidy federal dollars and those federal dollars dry up where are we at in terms of investment. I'm not saying that's positive or negative, but having that understanding prior to making decisions is is almost essential. Right. Um, and I think that's and I'll say it out loud, even though being recorded, I think some of it's the reason people are dragging their feet a bit on this one. And trying to understand it. Public money, private enterprise. So a lot of the solars, uh, the public funds available are 26% of the projects that go in, or 26% of the financing is coming from tax dollars on a lot of the solar now. Okay. That's a good number to know. Thanks. So then, then there's a section on system upgrades. Replacement uh, will require technical review approval and location improvement permit. So if they're upgrading and they're going back through again, just like somebody remodeling their house, doing a renovation, they need to reapply for a permit. Does it count the same as if they're just popping on an old panel to get a more efficient panel on? Like if they're not structurally changing the supports, if they're just changing out the panel like a painted black. Right. It's, it's a good point somewhere you have to draw a line between where is it an upgrade versus maintenance. Right.
addition after I mean you still have to meet setbacks but if, if they've got the room to do it they want to move ahead forward is that going to be a phase two project or is it going to be yeah not going to be submitted and like a longevity on the allowance of that because like <laughs> the projects in the start counties have stopped and are currently not done, do they have mm -hmm. a timeline in order to restart and start putting things That's back exactly in? Exactly. Mm -hmm. What's the nature of the delay? Yeah. Or how much Money. delay are you allowed? Exactly. So <clears throat> that is a good point. So project plan. Project plan. Project, yep. <laughs> Within that project plan, and not to be the doom and gloom guy, but is it, <laughs> and by the way, still trying to work all this out state and county, but is it reasonable for somebody to be expected to be able to provide decommissioning within that plan? Or is that not a reasonable request as we bring them in? And it's a question, not a statement. It's a good question. To be purpose for decommissioning. Purpose for and plan for. And plan for. I don't want to get to the back side of it and and then try to work that out. So here's the really hard part about this. There's a big section here. Yeah, this is. just notes all on decommissioning. Yeah. Abandonment and decommissioning requirements. So I'm, I'm going to make a note to put that in with that part. But until we can get to the abandonment and decommissioning, there's so much we don't know yet about this. It, it, I, I acknowledge that, right? On many yeah. levels. Yeah. So, but it's it's in here for a reason, and there's two or three pages just, yeah. just for that. Yeah, on people's mind. It is, but it's it's a big deal. Again, what what happens if a company goes out of business, decides to walk away? Then the landowner ultimately could be responsible if they don't have a bond or something in place for that. If the landowner can't afford to take those out, then Ultimately, the taxpayers are going to take that out, and, and that lien to goes back to the landowner who may lose their property. Goes back to what Kevin talked about as far as your federal funding or whatever you get. If it, it's gone, then what is going to it, it could. And, it and could. let's face it, a lot of these, a lot of these are right, are smaller LLCs that are that are doing this. Right. Although a lot of them share the same mailing address, they're separate. They're different LLCs. That's a fact. I mean, it's yeah, there. No. Those contractors are recorded in the uh, county recorder's office. Appreciate you. Should that be? Should they be? I mean, as far as each one be, whether it be area one, area two, area three, according to the same address, whatever. But. So each, 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 as far as this goes, as far as I can tell right now, uh, for decommissioning, it's going to have to be for each. One separately. Each one that applies for their building permit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that would probably be enough. It's part that. of the package. It is. It's part of the package. Yeah. So that would, that would hold it to it. Requirements. Okay, there's the next paragraph. A special use permit shall not be issued for a commercial solar facility until the applicant submits a feasibility study demonstration that the amount of generated power can be supported by the relevant electric company and our electric grid. In other, in other words, the meaning behind that paragraph is, are they want to go put in, let's say somebody puts in a thousand acre farm, and they, but they can only use 40, 50% of it because the electric grid won't accept that electricity. We don't have the capacity to do that. So that kind of study is going to be important also to see if it's even feasible to do. Steve, does that study exist yet? Because I, you would, I can't answer that. I don't know. I would imagine that the the I would hope the electric companies know what they could accept. I would hope the people putting in the solar and proposing these the solar. I'm sorry, but you're five years behind. They've done that way, way long ago. All so, this information is available. That's my, mm -hmm. and hence yeah. the question. Yeah. Okay. Thank and you. We, just wanted to let you know. And we, so, could, we could get that through. I'm sure we could get that through the utilities. Thank you. Yeah. So you have to apply before the project can really move forward. You have to apply to the electric 
Yeah. Well, can I get you start with? Can I get your name first so it's on record? Robert Broder. An address? 330 Jefferson Street. Thank you. Paul Amore, uh, 20944 Polk County Road. Thank you. So they have to apply to get permission to even start a plan. And then the grid operator tells you how many gigawatts you can put in it. And then you develop your plan from there because they say at this point you can put this many, this many. watts in the system. So yeah. you you don't just willy nilly go out and throw up a thousand acre of solar farm and go. God, I hope you I understand that's why I asked the question. But there are it's cases, odd to me. There are cases that that's happened now that the people have well, been, I, I, that, that they were built and the system no, couldn't sustain them. I was to say they can't do it now. They have have all the ducks in the row. Based on based on what they want to sell it. They, they want have, somebody to buy it. Up. Um, at the plant, they have to have all the information, and they've got it. And if you don't follow all their rules, they're yeah, sorry. You, you can't get on our highway. So when them. you say their rules, you're talking about the utility companies. Uh, it's no. not even the utility companies. It's the grid operator. Yeah. So like Nipsico has no say so in it. It's okay. the grid it's operator. It's actually on a smaller it's on the next level. Yeah. It's okay. on a huge scale yeah. and they they go, where are you wanting to put if you think of all those high tensile lines yeah, that yeah. we see everywhere, if you think of that as a highway. Yeah. And then you need an on ramp onto that highway. Yep. Yep. So which is a substation like, like burning from Reynolds all the way over to Ohio. Those sure, are going through our area right here. Sure. Yep, there you go. Yeah. Absolutely. There's six of them, I think, or yeah. eight yeah. in Baroque that go in different directions. That's exactly. So that's a intersection to the grid. Yep. And then you come up on there, and then your power is on there, and then you get paid accordingly on your power. So they're not going to let you build some system that's going to blow the grid up that's right so they're not going to allow you even in there um and it's it's not nipsico it's not it's the grid operator literally deciding what where it can go so you're saying it first come first serve uh it's on a queue and you get in the queue and it might take three or four years before they even acknowledge that okay if you want to go ahead and build go ahead and then you got another four or five years of permitting to get to that. Point. So the queue had been shut down, which is why Star County has probably stopped yeah. because the queue had stopped right. because the whatever it said we need to. We you know, they needed to recalculate or do whatever they do or infrastructure improvements, whatever, but they're like you're we can't take that power, so they probably stopped. I don't know. So but, listening, both of you gentlemen listening to you, would a better question be to understand the queuing if we're going to bring a system in and online in terms of permitting and stuff where where would we expect what, you to be queued you know, into what, the grid what you really need to know is what it takes for them to build it it's kind of like writing the rules and they can't your rules right now there won't be any solar in Culver. that's for sure because well, they yeah. can't meet those things so you might as well just vote to not have solar and be done with it because if you start putting all these restrictions into it, they won't right, there to see. And they don't really want to come in on a large scale at this point either. Oh, so they're, 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 they're homes in the, the town. They're, the, they're, the, they're, they're not going to come in this town. Well, yeah. not into town, but the, the kind of project you're going to get in Culver is going to be very similar to you putting solar panels on your roof. It's going to be for a specific operation so to to give power to the academy or to the school or to the cabinet factory you're not going to build a the the cost on putting in a, a 12 acre or a 50 acre field is so astronomical you would never make that out thinking you're going to push that back up on the grid and you know when the power bowl out of it's just not going to happen but that's that's good information and it's very good information. The only thing I got on that is just like what we were talking about before. So, I mean, according to the queue that you got, and when you stop, like they stop, I mean, is that preventing anybody else? To be put oh, yeah. Thing? It, it froze. It was it's froze for so, I mean, so a couple, couple three years. First, serve, first come, first serve. Or you you sign up for the queue 
from our my understanding, you sign up for the queue and you're in that spot. You're first in line, second in line. They're going to review you. So anybody who is trying to get on the queue now, they could be a hundred or a thousand spots behind. It's right. it's not something that's boom. Let's build. Let's knock out a hundred acres. Uh, north of town and and throw that in the grid. It, it's just not going to happen. Right. It's going to be something that, again, is going to save you money on the school power. Right. Or the academy is going to want to put it out at the airport to save themselves. Appreciate that. Power yeah. Bills yeah. Or, yeah. or here is going to put it to save the factory money. It's much more of a supplementary rule, right? That you're yeah. coming in very specific on a very so, specific so really, internal grid almost. So right? you guys yeah. really, you're probably the person you'd want to talk to would be Nipsico. Yeah. Because yeah. they're going to be more apt to talk to you on the lower scale of what's going to go on. But you're not going to have, I don't care how far you push out your zoning, but you're not going to have that big bass lake project here yeah right. um that's why i focus the only real answer here the way than really. commissioning the county i believe is an ordinance where when you start the project you got to say it's going to cost x dollars to decommission the, the project yeah and then you have to put that bond up before the they're still job. working on that yeah, they have, they're, they have they're requesting a surety bond on that, right? The, so, the, county, the county attorney's still working on trying to get those bond things in place. And then they re-look at what it's going to cost every three years, and then if it's more money, you have to throw more money into that right. kitty to take it down. That's right. That's the that's what it works in the surety bond, basically, to, as a guarantee. Okay. Well, it's, 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 it's a sliding that. scale because, you know, things what it costs to it, it increase it. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. right. So it's like looking at your roads, which are horrible. You know, <laughs> you're you're always I've heard that. for <laughs> what you're going to need for in 10 years down the line. Uh, you should be. I don't think we are. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for that information. Um, with that, with that information, uh, to me, it still seems important. We make sure that they've done done that. And don't. Don't right. just build it. Oh, right. as far as far as when they as far as our checklist for us is to have that on the checklist that sure the checklist that they can demonstrate they've done that. But it's good to know that it's been initially done. We're recon our role is to reconfirm then. Yeah. And that that all right. I appreciate that. No, I mean, yeah, but, and again, if you're looking at how to phrase your bonding and your ordinance, I would say do that work before you. Before you per pound the first nail, you have to have that bond and then, you know, address it in whatever period, you know, address it every year, every three years, every 10, whatever you feel. Making sure there's adequate increment for the inflated cost of decommissioning inside. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because, I agree. Yeah, as I say, I'm not going to get cheaper. No, no, no. No. And, and that's why the state's working on this now also. Yeah. Because there's a lot of questions around the decommissioning of it. That may be some of the hardest part of this whole thing. That's why it's going to be. That's that's why it's last. It is appreciate that. Oh, Thank you. Thanks. I would say that they're probably in our actual zoning area. There probably aren't too many farms that are actually large enough to have the super big ones. Are you looking at that map or that map? Unless they. And your zoning bonds, you basically have the, the open down. arm between 17, Thorn, up to 16, and there's not enough acreage there to put in a super plant. So, again, you're not going on the grid. You're doing something smaller to right. an yeah, industry. Probably, probably, probably the academy owns. They're probably some areas of land. There. Well, I, I think plan, I think you said it, planning ahead. We don't know what the future holds, so we want to make sure when we write an ordinance that we're but going to be protected in the future. But you also your ordinance so strict that the cabinet factory goes, we want to put up solar, but I ain't dicking with all this, and we're moving to North Carolina. So, I mean, you you want to have right, but I don't want to leeway in there to where it's not so strict that they're going. <laughs> Right. Well, and, and to that point, that's why it's broke down in sure. different no, right. different size. Oh, that 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 oh, yeah. yeah, so it is broke down in, in different sizes. Out here, I mean, 
you know, more of the town and then the academy mm -hmm. factory or the academy or the uh, cabinet factory over here, or whatever, won't be able to do what they do because the queue's already met from. What, what, well, they won't be in that queue. They are not in that, in that queue. queue. No, no because right. they're on a. They're on that lower industry where, if anything, they're coming into the. So okay. the bigger farm is going up on that big highway up there. The okay. the littler projects are coming down on these little lines that run up down our road. So I appreciate that. I mean, I apologize for not being like REMC. If you if you put up panels on your roof and you're in the REMC zone, they don't buy your extra power. Yeah. They um, yeah. they bank your extra power, but they won't buy it. But in Nipsico, last I had heard, they were that was a few years ago. They were buying. They will buy. They your are extra still. Power. They are. So, but again, you're not gonna on that small scale. You're not gonna throw up something that's producing ten times the power yeah, you need power right and and throw that on the grid, thinking you're. It's just not going to happen. Right. And I believe Nipsico will tell you, or RMC will even tell you how much you can do or can't do. Right. And again, that's where I'd say I would get with Nipsico on not really what way. more, well, realistically, what kind of project you're looking at. That's what, this. that's my question. That's, that's a question that I have. Um, and maybe best answered by Nipsico is, what anticipatory needs in terms of scalability that we should probably be focusing on? You know, I started off this conversation saying farm because it's a scale because it's on the everybody's mind. But if that's not that's not the pressing issue, what can we anticipate so we can be a little bit ahead of the game so we don't have that situation where we have uh, an industry that we can't accommodate? Right. Or that we are we written we've written ordinances yeah, that are counter against that. Yeah, yeah, well, and that's my point. Where do we need to that's a good point. And I mean, are we looking at large scale or medium scale in terms of servicing of somewhere like I the mean, academy? Or totally academy? realistically, you know what that zoning boundary is, and I don't think you're gonna try and expand that mm -hmm. after no. <laughs> so realistically, you know what kind of acreage you have and what kind of Exactly. And I would assume even Nipsico could go, well, you could put something here or something here, but reality is you're looking at rooftop here. Yeah, it would be it would be nice to know like what how many what a large scale or medium scale would accommodate. And that's a question that we should probably pursue. Well, I was gonna say because you guys it feels like you're concentrating on you know this top two four thousand acre plan, but there you don't have four thousand acres here. Right. You have a lot smaller. Right. If, if, thank you. Definitely. Good point. And as far as your smaller scale that we're talking about, as far as residential and all those others, I mean, that's going to be proposed in the application to start this, right? So you're saying they're getting here from moving everything else. So, I mean, as far as trying to. Unless yeah, you're brave and you're going off the grid completely, I'm pretty sure you're going to need REMC or Nipsico's approval before gonna, you do something. Yeah, but they're going to have the stop sign up before you get to us. Right. They're not going to let you do something that's going to burn the grid up yeah. on their scale. So. Especially if you want to sell it back. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. but, well, yeah, yeah they, there's a whole operation of traffic lights, for lack of a better word, for power going one oh, way yeah. or the other and all of those things. And I mean, there's a whole operation there. You, you know it too when they flip it up at Nipsco, when you see the stack starting to smoke that they've already, <laughs> you bet you I worked around that a lot. I just know as far as concentrating so much on residential things like that, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's a whole lot of detail that you need to look at on that other than that's, we're, we, that's that has a, there's no moratorium on any doing the residential or the rooftops right. in town. Yeah. Our moratorium is strictly on large scale in, right. uh, industrial solar farms. But this also this conversation also leads us into the battery storage units that we'll get to later. Because when you have that excess, people are going to want to store that. And yeah, and I and I did hear NIPSCO has lowered what they were paying per kilowatt. I, I, I heard that whatever whatever their measure is, I heard that they're they pay less than they would assume they're all going to go to the REMC system of I ain't paying for it. <laughs> you can do what you want. I and I have no clue what regulations around that. Yeah. Again, with me, maybe nice to have NIPSCO person come in and tell us how the grid works locally. Yeah. John works for NIPSCO. Yeah. Maybe, maybe well, just have them tell you're us. You're going to need that engineer guy yeah. at the NIPSCO office that can really 
explain all of that. So, I mean, I honestly would go that direction and say, what do we need? So do you think he would possibly come in in our May meeting and give us a little presentation or me? I don't even know who he is. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, but like I'm, I would I'm thinking, I I'll, would I'll reach out and see if I can get some contacts and see yeah. if we can get that. I would assume they would be eager to because they rather the town. Be heading in what they consider the right direction and not the wrong direction and yeah. whatever that is. Be nice to be able to get some answers. So for for. So for a building permit application for solar energy systems, there's a list of ideas here. It's not a list, there's some ideas or thoughts. What needs to be on an application in that process that we may want to see? So some of that solar system specifications, including manufacturing model information, country of origin of all their equipment, materials they're bringing in, Module design and site plans. We've already talked a little bit about that. Uh, business plan would also cover some of what we've talked about as far as the taxes and, and what kind of revenues that might bring to Culver. Uh, which uh, that would only be on the large scale. Anything less than this than the farm farm scale would probably not bring us much. Of course, we want a business plan and uh, system components, panels, inverters, batteries, a list of all those and. This is this again. These are taken out of other ordinances from other places. Right. These bullet if points. We're, if we're still, so they're just thoughts. We're still discussing solar on the larger levels, including farm large levels. One of the things that have been mentioned is the the, the tax it, that's placed on our road system based upon the equipment coming in. Can we can we request a transportation plan and weights? So we can anticipate, but we would have to do that for everything. Yeah. So anybody that's taking large scale trucks up and down the road for any purpose. And that's exactly what we did with, I think the, for example, the dunes had to file a transportation plan yeah. and had to provide a dot with all the weights. And we've had conversations also about responsibilities of road repair and on, on their route. So we've had that conversation. Okay. Well, um, I don't know. Was if that I, specific I, to the county? Pardon me. Is that specific to the county roads? Uh, it's specific to all roads. So, okay, the roads coming in. For example, down. including Lake Shore, which is busting out. We have a hand up. <laughs> yeah. I would be very cautious of your weights and all weights and things because you still are an agricultural community. You still are going to have. I agree. Semis, combines. I agree, but these things roaming up and down the road. And so you're going to be one. I mean, you're not going to want. I do understand ban, that. Buying Larry Miller from farming is no, I don't. However, but if no, if, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying on a typical construction project this scale on scale. Oftentimes, it's a requirement for them to file plans within DOT to be able to provide a transportation plan with that. I don't know if we include that in here. I was just only suggesting it as a. Yeah. And that's as, more, it's the concentration for a small amount of time. It's yeah, a, I guess I would say maybe put it in a section of agriculture. <laughs> I'm writing your clause on that. <laughs> little are, are you telling me I have 70 more farmers? <laughs> no. Would that be a bond issue or? For the road would that we go into Marshall County because the county road? Not yeah, I'm not sure, Barry. Um, like that's just a consideration. Maybe. Right now the county's working also on road agreements along with bond agreements yeah. for the solar farms that are going in north of Culver. Yeah, question as far as with the system components when it comes to the batteries, because a lot of talks about batteries. Can we go to batteries at another time? Because <laughs> that's if we get through the solar part, then we can then we can start doing the do the right, battery we're part. Just included in the same ordinance. So that can be They're two separate right now. We have them as two separate ordinances. So that was one of my concerns. I know when they added the additional high tensile line across the county, the county botched that and they never repaired those roads. So it is a good idea to put something mm -hmm. in place. Just try to think ahead in terms and of how to word it and all of those things. It so it might be for mostly projects that are coming in right. that are going to be high intensity for a very short period of time as opposed to 
farmers that are going to be doing this every fall, every winter, spring. Yeah, and, and for whatever reason, they didn't use the roads that logically made sense. <laughs> yeah. They came oh. down our road just try. all the time, <laughs> and our road was just shattered. So for, the, for the sake of time, yeah, I'll, I'll, anyway. I'll keep us moving since we since we have limited time. But yes, you're right. Was well, green, so yes, <laughs> you're, you're you're right. Um, incubated eggs. So, and, and then when it comes to the, the to those road plans, also just a note on that too. Right now, that's that's going to take it's going to take legal counsel. To, to yeah, do absolutely. That. We're we're not going to be able to do that. No, yeah. we're not. Well, I mean, we could, but it won't hold up. <laughs> we could put an idea for, forth, but it's still going to be legal counsel that's going to have to. And, and counsel's going to whatever we write before it goes anywhere. It, it's still going to it's still going to go through legal to make yeah, sure that it's vetted. That we are in compliance with state statutes. A complete building for so that's this bullet points here. Thoughts on what you want to see on an application? Anything specific? For the country of origin of all equipment that is being requested, is it necessary or is it just that it's been vetted by whatever regulatory commissions would handle that in the United States, being inspected by? uh an environmental board for the components that are in it that are going to actually hold the electrical charge things like that or is it just hey this came from china we don't know if it's been inspected by a u.s company or not company but government entity to say it's safe to put up country well, of origin but i put country, country of origin in, in my perspective is if 26 percent of their funding is coming from our tax dollars mm -hmm. i think we need to know if it's american made or where that money's Going back to one of our adversaries like China. I just wasn't sure if it was just to know where it was coming from or if it was for quality assurance purposes. I just don't know where it's coming from. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure what the quality, I don't I have no way of knowing how the it's quality like, will vary. Yeah, you're going to get a car that's built overseas. It's still going to meet American regulations in order to be on our road. I think so. That's a good question. Any more? I mean, it's what do we want to see on an application? Um, it's a minimum 90% recyclable. How are going to enforce or how are you going to know what's recyclable or not? I mean, is that something we're going to throw out there, but are we going to prove or disprove? That's what Marshall County Recycle Depot see as well. <laughs> are we going to go through that? Because we'd have to know the components because that's right. the components breakdown, so we'd have to know. Yeah, what is going to be lead based and things like that? I mean, and I would say that when it comes to that, that's sort of like decommissioning. Um, or we like would look toward what the state comes up with as a percentage. I'd probably that's I, recycled. I mean, ninety percent. It's a good number, but I just don't know if we can reach that. I don't disagree because when you start putting electrical components and things, it's going to make it a lot harder to break apart. Like you can't recycle a motor as easily, even though you can recycle steel, you can recycle the copper, but it's getting it all tore apart. <clears throat> okay, so I just heard on that was maybe tie that into the decommissioning part. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you'd like to see on an application? And if there's nothing else right now, when we put this back and continuously go over it, things may pop up. Okay, we have like two and a half minutes left. Yeah, you down half a page. No, yeah. celebrate. So I'll, I'll type something up and I'll send it out to you that's updated. Yeah. And if you want printed copies, I'm more than happy to get those to you Thank as well. You. Thank you, guys. Thank you for your input. Could I Thank you. Thank you. It's appreciated. We're learning. You might want to under recycle thing. I mean, like we throw cans in the recycle bin. They're not necessarily 100% recyclable. There might be to try to figure out what a realistic number to. That's what they made. Nice. Like a I think so. One of the things that make fire. solar more palatable to people is the recyclability of the panels right now. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 they're improving that. Finding out more information on that might be interesting. 
before we set a, a standard for recyclability. Right. Again, these are, just, these are bullet points and sections yeah. taken out of a whole yeah. different yeah. other yeah. ones. Yeah. So yeah. it's just to give us a starting. The yeah. country of origin might be challenging. I wanted to put them on your roof. If you want to do a small scale. Yeah, that wouldn't pertain. I wouldn't think that I don't want to climb somebody's roof to take a look at the bank. Well, right. I was just say because they're going to have to try to get a quote. And yeah, I mean, that's sometimes challenging for a small. It is working in construction. Sometimes a small pile is hard to get a country of origin on that versus. So, a, wait, yeah. I, I put a note down after that based on scale. Really yes, sir. Structural, yeah, that's good. Whatever can you support it once you Let's check our signature okay. show. <laughs> yeah. Another deal will be coming around. And somebody else took up our time. Oh, don't start with it. Somebody else took up our time. The Lord's okay. working through small. Okay, business. next meeting is going to be May 21st at 5 p.m. So if there's any other closing okay. comments, Put it the then, then I don't think we need a vote. We can just say we're adjourned. We're adjourned. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Yeah, As you can tell, we're still learning. Bring everything, try to get it all dialed in. Everything works like it used to. Don't be about it. If you have a little bit of 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 a and you know, the very interesting. Well, <laughs> <laughs> the serious. Yeah. just wrote that one up. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. The four o'clock meeting that I had. Sure. Oh, it's uh, nothing but meetings, but meetings go on. Yeah. Put on your own. So, uh, no, they, uh, and they would engineer they look at your house. Of course, I have my house has all kinds of gables and everything, so we don't have a lot of flat. But they looked at it and they said they could do it and that it would be no cost to us. So uh, I said, well, the pennies for the gables. He said, well, the program is that you will have these new panels and then and we'll set you up with a 25 year long to buy the panels and all the installation. But the, why it doesn't cost you anything? There you go. Yeah. So it isn't, it doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything extra. Uh -huh. And I said, ah, no, thank you. Yeah. You know, and I think those kind of guys are going to be around. They are. I'll just put a uh, right. Yeah, I think individually it's fine. The people need to know what it's going to cost them to. And I said to the guy, uh, I'm 83 years old. Does that mean that then will pay off on a third date? He said, oh. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Anyway, you know, that makes them think, yeah. Well, thanks. Okay. So, my Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Put it here, take it off up the road, you might get put three and fifteen in it. Huh? Three and fifteen in it. Three and fifteen. Five months get you over. How do you know that? It's about this. Did you die in one? Huh? Did you die in one? No, I just went by the I just went by the footage and asked the, the speech shop and I asked for that.
have one of those this year. I really like I'm Bob Selman. I have a Mustang head. That's the 2017. But you can do a lot of that. But I put a lot of things. Yeah. I've got I'll pay over three pounds in there. I know I put a lot more than that. <laughs> a lot more than that. Yeah. I know I put at least that, but I put labor. All my labor was in that too. I built it. Well, the, the small block Chevys are easy to work on. No, I can't. You should be so cheap. I, I, I didn't say cheap, I said easy. No, easy. They're and easy and to cheap. work on. You should be. Yeah. Easy and cheap. I did. I mean, in that moment, years ago, I bought okay. a motor to put in it. And I set it up. I had set up with the. Uh, Almost 3,000 clearance on the one thing. And I mean, we have like a motorcycle. The trouble is, I wound up cruising around town 35, 40 mile an hour and spun bearings. Well, 45 mile an hour. <laughs> and bearings, you got it. You put roller bearings in it? This one right here has got it's the full roller cam, it's got all rollers, everything, roller rockers, everything. That makes, that makes it better. Oh, yeah. That should help with your longevity. Exactly. I mean, shoot, longevity and everything, and you know, less, less crit, I mean, less parts, right? <laughs> yeah, it just depends how you drive it, too, you know. 